you're probably making a big mistake starting every new web design project from scratch. From creating your own type system, sitemap, pages, or whatever. And why is it a mistake? Well, you're actually not spending that time designing the project itself. And I'm here to fix that. Before we get into the specific parts of organizing your project, let's organize your workspace and files first. For my case, what I'd like to do is create my own team and create folders to categorize each project. In this case, I have folders for digital products that I might share to you guys, my freelance client works, my personal works like my portfolio or my side projects. So by organizing the folders here, this way it's much easier to access and find what you're looking for. And it's also much more neat and organized as well. I know I haven't gotten around to doing it, but I also recommend adding the thumbnails to your project. So it's a little bit easier to identify which project it is. And one last thing before we dive into organizing your project, I also like to keep several favorite files that I frequently access here. So files like the project starter template here, in which I'll dive into the next part of the video, is my must have for every new project. So I just favorited it on the side here, so I can just duplicate it whenever I want to, when, or whenever I'm starting a new project. All right, let's dive into the project itself. So I'm here on my project starter template, and you can see a lot of different pages, and let's walk through each of the pages. So the first page here would be the project cover and just put anything here and the thumbnail of the project should update. I mean, it's very self-explanatory. You just put some kind of elements here and it should update on your Figma workspace, the thumbnail itself, I mean. And yeah, and that's the first page. And next up is the mood board page. Here you can bring inspiration and compile them all here in this kind of image gallery here. And it can be websites, images, etc., or just about anything to capture the mood or the atmosphere of your project itself. And honestly, mood boarding is not entirely necessary, but I just like to do it frequently since it sets a really good visual direction of your project onwards and also maintains consistency throughout the project as well. I recommend using sites such as save.it, Unsplash, or any of the inspirational resources that I've mentioned in my video here, which I'll be linking up here or down below in the description to create your mood board. So after the mood board page, we have the sitemap page. This page, you have a sitemap of your project here, and I mostly do my sitemaps on Reloom, which is an awesome tool for any kind of web design projects. So I, I won't go into depth about Reloom, but they have an AI sitemapping tool, which makes it super efficient to brainstorm the sitemap of your project. They also have a huge library of pre-made wireframes, so you can visualize the structure of your project as well. So if you can, I highly recommend taking a look at these tools. I use it for every of my projects and it just feels like a cheat code. And this is not like a sponsorship or any kind of affiliation. I just highly recommend that you should also use it as well for your projects. And yeah, it really speeds up the design process as well. And I also included a user journey diagram here to map out the stages of the users could experience on the website. And yeah, I mean, I think this is particularly extremely helpful or even necessary if you're building somewhat a sophisticated website or application. Now to the style guide. I use Reloom style guide since it's super intuitive and it has all the styling presets that you need to start a project. The only thing that they were missing was a padding system, so I added that as well. So when I start off a project, I also like to add more of my own style guides, like bigger font sizes, more colors. So this Reloom style guide is super customizable since they're all made with auto layout, so you can just remove or add uh, styles as you want very easily. So if you're trying to customize this style guide, I'd also suggest to you that you use the batch styler plugin to customize the style guide instead of manually changing it one by one. So I'll show you guys how to use the batch styler plugin to change the styles in the style guide. So here's the style guide that I have here, and I want to change the font face uh, from Roboto to something else. And I just, I have all of these kind of texts here and I want to change them all. So what you can do is select the frame here, open up the batch styler plugin and it should locate all the text styles that you have here. Identify all the text styles. And if you want to change from Roboto to like Satoshi, you can just select all of these, change the font family to Satoshi and update styles and everything should be updated. Super neat. Now on this page, you can always add more frames to store your components, your assets, or whatever you may need. So let's move on to the next three pages. Not a lot of going on for these pages, but for each page, there are frames for desktop, tablet, and mobile screens, each with a grid layout for the device screens. You can always alter the grid layout to suit your project needs. I tend to skip the mid-fidelity part since Reloom has a pretty high quality wireframes that basically looks like mid-fidelity prototypes. 
And another tip that I have is if you have a lot of frames on your project, I would suggest that you convert them into sections that they are more organized. So you can just select the frames and right click and then convert them into sections. So the final page will be the archive page. So you would store all the stuff that you don't need here rather than deleting the elements. It's better to keep them somewhere safe just in case you might need them again. So once again, I've linked the project starter template down below in the description. And for those who are starting every project from scratch, I really recommend taking a look or use this template or even build on top of it so you can really maximize your time and efforts designing websites. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to do your thing down there. And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure to click these elements on the screen. But yeah, that's about it. See ya.